Hi, my name is Danielle Hausman. I'm an occupational therapist and rehab educator here at the Craig H. Nielsen Rehabilitation Hospital. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video about preventing skin problems. Please take a moment to read this important disclaimer by pausing your video. Thank you. Here are the objectives that we'll talk about today. We want you to be familiar with skin risk factors and learn specific strategies to incorporate into your daily life to prevent skin problems from happening. So there are many different risk factors regarding who is going to have problems with skin, but luckily most of the risk factors are within your control, but a few aren't. So first we'll talk about the risk factors that are in your control. So we want you to think about your skin as a 24 hour approach. So think about all the positions and surfaces that your body is going to be in contact with throughout the day and night, 24 hours, and making sure those are all good supportive surfaces. Since for right now, you might be spending a lot of your time up in a wheelchair. So the goal of positioning in a wheelchair is to decrease loads over the bony parts of your body. And it's also important to keep a very close eye on your wheelchair cushion. You'll want to do regular inspections to make sure that there aren't any tears that might compromise how well it's able to protect your skin. So pressure relieving is the most important thing that you can do when you're up in your chair to protect your skin. So hopefully you know how often you should be doing them and for how long. So every 20 minutes for two minutes. And please work with your therapist to determine the safest and most effective way for you to complete your pressure release. So for laying down and sleeping, we don't want you to nap when you're in your wheelchair. One, you could slide out of it, but also when you're sleeping, you're not changing positions. So if you feel tired, we're happy to help you get back in bed. And there isn't any agreement on an optimal bed or mattress to have at home. But what is important is repositioning. So here in the hospital, we ask you to turn every two hours. When you go home, if you don't have a current skin problem or wound that's needing to heal, then it's okay to just turn once in the middle of the night in most cases. But be sure to check with your healthcare team before you leave the hospital. And we want you to avoid sleeping with your head at an angle that's more than 30 degrees. And it's important to float your heels by having a pillow or wedge underneath of them. Since your heels are such bony prominences, we don't want them constantly making contact with the bed throughout the night. So let's talk about some common accidents. Some of this may seem like common sense, but we think it's important to discuss. So always wear shoes when you're up in your chair so that they're protected. If you bump your feet on a narrow doorway, you might not feel pain from damage that happens. And when you're cooking and eating, be especially careful of hot beverages. It's easy to spill something on yourself and not even realize that you might have gotten a burn if you don't have sensation on that part of your body. And unless if your doctor has told you otherwise, avoid using electric blankets and car seat warmers for the same reason. It could become too hot and burn you without you even realizing it. So next, let's talk about posture. So having good posture evenly distributes pressure throughout your body. So you can see in the picture of the gentleman with good posture, those nice 90 degree angles are evenly distributing the pressure. But when you're slouching, that puts more pressure right on your sitting bones where you're already at a high risk for skin problems. So good nutrition is extremely important to protect your skin. So poor nutrition can increase the risk of skin breakdown and slow healing of a wound if you currently have a wound. So protein is extremely helpful with the formation, repair, and maintenance of bones, muscles, and skin. And vitamins A and C will also keep your skin healthy and strong and can help prevent a wound from happening. So here are some examples of high protein foods. So hopefully you like to eat things like chicken, eggs, peanut butter, milk, and our dietitians always want you to try to get protein directly from a food source whenever possible. But depending on the specific amount your medical team is asking you to have of protein, it might be difficult to get that much protein from a food source. So then lean on your supplements. And this can come in the forms of bars, drinks, and powders. 
when it comes to your clothing, just avoiding clothes that are too tight. So it uses the same concept that something might be poking into your skin and hurting you without you being able to feel it. So avoid pants that have thick seams and bulky pockets. Be mindful of things like zippers, buttons, and snaps that might be poking into your skin. And we want to make sure that your skin is staying dry, that if you do have a bowel or bladder accident for any reason, we want to help you change right away because that moisture can build up and cause skin problems. And we want to make sure that we're helping you to fully rinse and dry after you take a shower, that you're using a mild soap and that we're drying in between any genital areas and skin folds. And while we want to avoid external moisture, we want to make sure that your skin is staying well moisturized. So using any lotion of your choice is great, especially around the hands and feet. And we want to be especially mindful of bony areas, such as the feet and elbows. For feet, we want to make sure that we're drying your toes after you take a shower, that your toenails are staying trimmed, and that your shoes aren't too rigid or tight. So if you smoke, we strongly encourage you to stop for many, many reasons, but let's talk about it in the context of your skin. So nicotine, whether it's from you smoking or from secondhand smoke, it makes your blood vessels constrict or get tighter, and that decreases the oxygen and the blood flow to everywhere in your body, including your skin. So being around cigarette smoke will, be, will make your skin more dry, which will make you more vulnerable to pressure injuries. So please talk to your healthcare provider about support for quitting smoking if you currently do smoke, and we would be happy to help. When it comes to traveling, we want to make sure that whether you're on a long car ride, a plane ride, a train ride, that there's measures in place to protect your skin. So this might mean traveling with a cushion and stopping periodically in order to pressure release. Next, we'll talk about the factors out of your control, which luckily there aren't too many. So aging, as we get older, skin becomes more fragile over time. So nothing we can do to stop the aging process, but just be more aware and more diligent about all these proactive measures. So if you experience muscle spasms, which are muscle movements that are out of your control, we wanna make sure that there's padding around all of your bony areas when you do have spasms such as around your bed and your wheelchair to prevent your body parts from rubbing together. And if you do experience swelling, we wanna avoid pressure over swollen areas. It may be helpful to elevate your hands and legs throughout the day, wear compression stockings if your doctor has asked you to, and make sure that your shoes aren't too tight. So our most important take home messages are, we want to help you develop healthy habits and routines that can prevent skin problems after having a spinal cord injury, keeping in mind that our skin tolerance can change over time and in different circumstances. And there are some factors out of our control, but most factors are within our control and it's important to do all of the proactive measures to minimize the risk for any skin problems. As always, please contact your primary care team with any questions.